afternoon. So today I'm going to talk about our convertible car T system and the question that we had when we started this project, can we create better killer cells now that we've heard the duo car T and other approaches looked a little bit silly, but when we started that we thought, what can we do in order to improve the car T cells? And we looked at the uh, basic car T cells who have, who, which have a lot of advantages, but at least uh, shortcoming. One is that it used to have a single antigen targeting. It's always on once you transduce the cells. It's always on. There's not a lot of control. And it used to be uh, highly dependent on mouse-derived single chain of feed uh, antibodies and not the full antibody. So we thought, what can we do in order to improve all those shortcomings? And we, for the first thing, we just dissected this CAR T into two parts. So the CAR T would be by themselves, and then the antibody would be in a second part, and after you dissect it into two, you need to combine them back together. So we use the NKG2D mic a receptor and ligand system. We made a CAR T that expressed the NKG2D, and an antibody, in our case, BNABs, HIV-specific broadly neutralizing antibodies, uh, as the full uh, size antibody, and we conjugated a part of the MIC uh, ligand into those uh, antibodies. We call them MIC bodies now, and now we can have more than one antibody at all time. We can use different things, or basically we can use everything that is bind to this MIC part. So in order to increase the safety of our system, we mutated the NKG2D and the MIC part. Now they only recognize each other and not the other natural ligand and receptor. So now we can have more than one antibody present in all time. We have duo, we have triple, we have hexa, whichever number of antibodies that you want to use or adapters that you want to use, you can use. You, can just, you just need to bind them to a MIC part. So now we can activate the cells in vivo. We can kill the cells in vivo if we target a complement protein bind bound to MIC part. And our system is based on uh, human antibody, human um, NKG2D, so it's supposed to be less immunogenic. And we started to see if we can use this nice platform that we were collaborating with a company called Cytos in order to kill our HIV-infected cells. We have different strains of HIV, two lab-adopted, X4 and R5, and one F4 transmitted founder virus, which is the most rel clinically relevant. We use two different uh, MICA bodies, one that binds to CD4 binding site on GP120, 3BNC16, 117, and one that binds to the V3 loop. We use another two negative control MICA bodies, one that binds to the B cell, CD20, and one that binds to uh, HER2 on cancer cell, and we use a negative control cells, which are the parental CD8. All our CAR Ts are CD8, so they cannot be infected by HIV. And then we wanted to see what would happen when we try that in our system. Our system, rather than going to PBMCs, we thought that the more relevant system would be uh, cells from lymphoid tissue. So we use fresh human tonsils and spleen. We process them into a single cell culture. We infect them with a HIV tagged with GFP. And then we monitor after the co-culture with our convertible CAR-T, which is the CAR-T and the MICA body, HIV-specific MICA body, for 48 hours. And then we do flow, and we look at what happened to the GFP-positive cells, which are the HIV-infected cells, and even more important, what happened to the uninfected cells. We want to see that our system is safe. And what we saw is that if you set to one the number of GFP-positive cells with the uninfected cells, and you just add the CD8, the parental cells, we see that there is no killing of the infected or uninfected cells. If you add the CAR-T by themselves, they are inert because the mutated NKG2D cannot bind anything uh, in the body. And when we add the CAR-T plus the two non-relevant MICA bodies, so against uh, CD20 B cells or against uh, cancer cells that we should not have in our um, culture, we see there is no killing of infected or uninfected cells. But when we add in a dose-dependent manner 3BNC60 based MICA body, we see a nice killing of the HIV infected cells, and at the same time, there is no killing of the uninfected cells. We repeated those experiments with three other MICA bodies, and as you can see, at least three made nice uh, results, whereas the 1074 showed no um, 
no efficacy against that specific strain, which is not surprising. Uh, F4 is a, a transmitted founder virus. Not all BNAPs are going to work against all strains, but that promotes us to think maybe we can or should we multiplex against different strains. So we started to do an, an experiment that were when we combined both HIV MECA bodies and other cell types, in that case we used a B cell MECA body, and we try to see if we can uh, have at the same time a CAR T that would kill the HIV infected cells and the uh, B cells. And what we saw, you can see on the, on the top, that we managed to kill B cells just by adding a B cell specific MECA body. And on the bottom, if we only add a mixture of HIV MECA bodies, we can kill HIV infected cells. If we add to the mixture both the B cells and the HIV MECA bodies, we managed to kill at the same time two different cell types, which is uh, nice to have, so it means that we can <coughs> multiplex. The next thing that we thought is, since our system is a three-part system, the target, the effector, and the MECA body, what are the kinetics of the system? So we collaborated with Noam, a postdoc in the Weinberger lab. We did some time-lapse microscopy to see the kinetics in a single cell level. And what we did was uh, tag the infected cells with GFP, and the red cells are the effector cells, and we took a photo every 30 minutes for 36 uh, fields of view, and then we analyzed the data, and what we saw is that compared to the CAR-T by themselves, when we add the HIV-specific MECA bodies, we see a decreased amount of GFP-positive cells, which means that we managed to kill the HIV-infected cells. It takes some time, as you can see, it takes between 10 to 15 hours until that starts, and we think it's because it's a two-part system. So the results that I just showed you are on primary infection, primary cells. The next thing that we wanted to do is go into the gold standard in the field of latency, which are CD4 from HIV-infected individuals. So we were uh, uh, collaborating with uh, AMFAR and the SCOPE cohort, and we got uh, LUCAPEX from six HIV-infected individuals. We isolated the CD4, reactivate those cells, and then combine them for 48 hours, we are with our convertible CAR-T. We didn't know which, which strain do we have in each patient, so we had all the mix, all the four uh, antibodies that we had against HIV, and then we measured the cell-associated RNA by DDPCR, and what we saw is that by 40, only 48 hours, we managed to kill between 40 to 60% of the reactable uh, reservoir in those uh, patients. Since this uh, system is safe, and we think that it's going to last in the body for more than a week or month. We think that we're going to get a better result when we move to the in vivo uh, part of the system. And I would like to summarize and say that I showed you that the convertible CAR T is a platform that is really safe, doesn't kill uninfected cells, kill only when you have the two parts, the CAR T and the MECA body. Uh, and it kills between 40 and 60 percent of the reservoir from HIV-infected individuals. I would like to thank Warner for introducing me to the project, everybody in the lab, our collaborator at CIFOS, the SCOPE team, and the, of course the HIV-infected individuals that participate in this study, and for the CIFAR for the grant. Thank you. basically the same antibody, and the overlap in neutralization uh, is very, very high. So I thought it was unlikely that uh, the explanation for why the 1010 centimeter wasn't working was uh, the fact that it wouldn't bind or neutralize. I thought there's probably something wrong with your 1010 74 construct. Uh, I don't know if you accept that, but I, that, that would be the, it, it's a surprising thing to find, to accidentally find viruses that are susceptible to one but not the other. So that, I just want to flag. We that. did find, we did some X4 uh, experiment and we saw and some find, difference. You did find some, okay. Yeah, uh, so we did so, find that. Uh, and the other question, just to be provocative, you almost recreated an NK cell. So what's wrong with just have, using NK cells? I'm not saying it's <laughs> wrong, I'm saying it might be the next step. We might do the convertible CAR-T, not in CD8, but with an NK. NK cell is exactly that, you use an antibody 
antibody, it binds a receptor, it, it, it uh, targets things. Um, is there a theoretical reason why this should be advantageous over yeah. native NK cells? Yeah, so basically everybody that was contracted HIV, they are not cured. So we need to have something in the body that would be better than what we have right now, the NK cells or the CAR Ts. So our platform is easily inducible. You can introduce it into the person and then three months later just deliver okay. some activating. I mean, I'll drop this in just a second, but if we did the exact same experiment with NK cells and an antibody, if we did the exact same experiment with NKs and an antibody, would we be getting less impressive uh, data? I haven't done it, so I don't know. Thank you very much. That's great. All right. <laughs>